Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks to the conference organizers and uh, thanks to everyone in the room for, uh, for joining me to hear a little bit about the dimension story. Uh, so is this the clicker? Sorry. Great. So we are also a publicly traded company, so we also have a slide full of words that I will now move on from. Um, Dimension Therapeutics. So we are a company focused on AAV gene therapy of the liver. Um, so we so you see sort of the four key aspects of our company. Uh, we have a broad product pipeline. We're focusing on uh, severe diseases, so patients with high unmet need. Um, we built a gene therapy platform that's based on uh, advanced capsid technology as well as a robust a manuf uh, mammalian-based manufacturing process. And... Um, we really built a team that's focused on uh, advancing products. So built a, we have a global uh, clinical regulatory organization as well as uh, significant expertise in vector engineering, manufacturing, and drug development. Um, our CEO, Annalisa Jenkins, uh, ran R&D at Merck Serono as well as a long tenure at BMS. Uh, Sam Wadsworth, our chief scientific officer, uh, led gene therapy at Genzyme for 20 years. And um, our head of manufacturing, Reed Clark, uh, ran the GMP lab at Nationwide Children's Hospital uh, for almost 20 years as well. So, so we have significant expertise to really advance um, programs really from bench to bedside is our vision uh, for the portfolio that we're working through. So this, the next slide is our requisite uh, platform slide. So we think of the dimension platform as really being based on our access to AAV capsids and our mammalian in, uh, manufacturing approach. So we, are, we have a licensing relationship with Regenix. So uh, we work with uh, the, the Regenix capsid estate and, and have a particular focus in capsids that are very hepatotrophic. So the capsids we're focused on have enhanced liver affinity and a much greater targeting to the liver than other AVs, which really drove our focus on the liver. Um, we are focused, as I'll get into later, on indications where uh, 5 to 10 percent expression is sufficient to enact the clinical benefit. And um, I'll walk through sort of the process by which we, we prioritize our diseases. And again, focusing on AV be because of uh, the well-established safety profile with AV having been studied in a number of human trials already. On the manufacturing side, so we, um, we use a mammalian-based system. There's a number, obviously a number of different approaches out there. Uh, we feel like mammalian is the most robust uh, AEV is a mammalian virus, and we feel like there are certain advantages to the system. We actually work across cell types uh, in mammalians, so we've done work in adherent HEK, suspension-based HEK, but our scalable platform is, is the HeLa platform. Uh, so that's, uh, that's going fantastically. We, uh, back in April, actually opened a second site. Uh, we're based in Cambridge. We have a second site in Woburn, Mass., and that's our... Uh, that's our scale-up facility, so we're able to scale up to 250 liters in that facility before handing off to uh, manufacturing partners for GMP and clinical batches, and ultimately, hopefully, commercial batches. I uh, will skip to our disease, uh, sort of how we got to the disease we're focused on, and then I'll move to the pipeline. So we we looked at the capsids that we that had been in license into dimension, and given their their uh, propensity to go to the liver, we focused on the liver as our target organ. Uh, so, within the liver, there's a, over 400 rare monogenic diseases, and, and as we looked at all of these, we said, we looked at them with a particular eye towards situations where we felt like the technology was the right tool for the job. So, really looking at diseases where the disease biology is clear where a relatively modest level of expression results in meaningful clinical benefit, uh, as well as the availability of translation, quality translational models. And a common thread across all the disease we're diseases we're focused on is the availability of biomarkers to assist both in sort of informing the translational aspects, but then also these are biomarkers that we're able to measure in our clinical trials. Um, all the diseases that we're going after I have the, also have the potential for orphan drug designation. So as you'll see, you'll see this recurring theme as I walk through the pipeline to describe our programs. Uh, they all are di very different diseases, but they all share some commonality in terms of how we selected them. So the next slide uh, shows our pipeline, our current pipeline. Uh, so the top five programs are our inherited metabolic disease programs, and those are all uh, still wholly owned programs. And we also have two hemophilia programs, one in hemophilia A, which we've partnered with Bayer, and one in hemophilia B. So the hemophilia B program is actually our most mature program uh, from a development standpoint. It's currently in a phase one, two trial. Uh, we've 
we've dosed the first cohort of that patient, uh, that, that study. Uh, the first three patients have been dosed, and um, we've announced publicly that we'll be, we expect to be uh, releasing the first uh, bit of data from that study later this year. Um, I'll move to the inherited metabolic disease portfolio. So our next most advanced program is one in ornithine transcarbamylase deficiency, or OTC deficiency. Um, that's utilizing an AAV, AAV8 capsid to deliver the OTC gene. And, um, and I'll, I have a few slides later. I'll walk through each of these programs in a little bit more detail. Uh, GSD1A, glycogen storage disease type 1A, is right behind that in the development queue. Um, that one is headed towards IND next year. And then we have three programs that are in the candidate selection stage. Um, one is in citral anemia type 1. So this is uh, another urea cycle disorder like OTC deficiency and uh, phenylketonuria and Wilson disease. So uh, from the partnering perspective, you know, we, we announced the, the, the last three programs earlier this year. We now have these seven programs that we're advancing. Uh, it's a lot for us to handle ourselves, and I think similar to what other folks are, 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 have described here, what, we're, what we really seek in partners is, is differentiated, really therapeutic area and disease expertise, uh, much like what we enjoy with Bayer, where in the Bayer relationship, um, we advance basically the program from, uh, from candidate to end of phase one, two, also doing, uh, doing the process development, manufacturing process development necessary to enable a smooth handoff, and then Bayer, uh, assuming success, would take the program on and advance it through phase three, and we'd also hand them over a robust uh, manufacturing process to enable that phase three and ultimately commercial production. So, uh, so the next slide really just maps out at a high level, uh, you know, sort of where we where we've been in the past year and what we see over the next uh, 12 to 18 months. Uh, as I mentioned before, we're anticipating uh, releasing Heme B data uh, later this year. Uh, the OTC program, IND, is, is well on track and expected to, to be submitted before the end of the year, um, and uh, also initiation of that, that phase one, two trial. Uh, we just announced a few days ago we got orphan designation for the GSD1A program, and we'd previously gotten uh, EU orphan designation for the OTC program. And, uh, and then earlier this year, as I mentioned, we announced a collaboration with the University of uh, University of Pennsylvania on our um, on on the expanded IMD portfolio, and that's the programs in PKU, citral anemia, and Wilson disease. As we look forward, uh, OTC initial data over in, during the course of 2017, as well as additional data uh, from the Heme B study rolling out in 2017, uh, we expect to file the GSD1A IND in 2017 as well, and then uh, some additional milestones you see down below, uh, particularly with some development candidates emerging from. The, uh, the additional work that we're doing on citral anemia, PKU, and Wilson. So just quickly, uh, in the next uh, seven minutes or so, I'll touch on, on the programs and, and the diseases, and you can start to see sort of, as I mentioned, that common theme that we're going after as we, as we pursue these programs. So OTC deficiency, this is an excellent disorder. Uh, it's, it's a defect in ammonia detoxification. So essentially, uh, as with many of our diseases, at a simple level, we either have it, they're single gene disorders where you have too much of bad stuff or too little of good stuff. So in this case, uh, ammonia builds up and leads to adverse cognitive and neurological effects. About 10,000 patients worldwide. Uh, we're focused in, the, in our clinical study. We're going to be focused on uh, the 80% of patients who have the late onset manifestation of this disease. Um, OTC is the most common urea cycle disorder, and um, really there's, the, there's no treatment, obviously, for the underlying cause. The only available uh, modalities are basically dietary control and then, um, then nitrogen scavenging agents. Uh, and so sort of the three hallmarks of all the diseases that we're going after, which you see on this slide, is, is really clear understanding of the disease biology and then strong preclinical evidence of proof of concept. And then, and then as I mentioned before, the biomarkers in, in our path to, to human proof of concept all will look very similar. So our heme B study will serve essentially as a template for all our future studies in that they're, they're all going to be Bayesian design studies, open label phase one, two, three patient cohorts, uh, to establish dose, and so um, all of our programs are going to essentially follow that same template. Uh, so in the case of OTC, we're going to be measuring serum ammonia, urinary erotic acid, and the conversion of carbon monophosphate to erotic acid, all biomarkers that are closely uh, associated with the disease pathology. And um, on the next slide, we'll talk about GSD1A. So this disease, it's, a, it's an autosomal recessive disorder, and so these patients lack 
um, glucose 6-phosphatase. So in, essentially are unable to mobilize glucose from glycogen. So glycogen builds up in the liver. The only uh, treatment available to these patients, unfortunately, is that they drink a cornstarch slurry every three hours. So from the time they're diagnosed, they drink cornstarch for every three hours for the rest of their lives. So, so this works in terms of it keeps the glucose level from going to zero, but every year when, you know, when, when the patients um, you know, go back to the, the, the clinic, there, there's patients that die every year from a parent falling asleep at night. So anyone with kids in the audience, I have a two-year-old at home, imagine having to get up every three hours with a newborn, and, and, and the feeding is not just to keep them from crying, but it's life-sustaining. And then imagine the anxiety of, of falling asleep during one of those uh, periods. So... Clearly huge unmet need. This is one that, I, you know, as a pediatrician and a father, I'm particularly uh, passionate about. And so we're, we're really excited about the prospects with this program. About 6,000 patients worldwide, uh, and it's diagnosed at birth because these, these babies present with hypoglycemia. Um, so, again, uh, we, there's, there's good animal data here. Uh, there happens to actually be a canine model for this disease in Maltese dogs. So this, is, uh, this occurred just from the breeding of these dogs for show purposes, and a naturally occurring mutation uh, was discovered. And so uh, one of our collaborators, David Weinstein, has a colony of these dogs um, that uh, grad students have to go feed uh, cornstarch every three hours, 24-7, 365. Um, but it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an excellent model for the disease. Um, and then from a biomarker standpoint, uh, you're able to measure blood glucose to, uh, to establish the, that the uh, therapy works. And, uh, and then you also can measure glycogen stores in the liver. So as I mentioned, this one, we're, we're uh, progressing with IND-enabling studies and anticipate uh, filing that IND in 2017. And then this next slide really walks through the, the, the balance of our IMD portfolio. And again, this is the, the sort of common theme that we're going after here. So with single gene disorders, well-understood biology, in the case of Wilson, you have a dysfunction in copper metabolism. In the case of PKU, a dysfunction in the metabolism of phenylalanine. And then in citrullinemia, obviously another uh, urea cycle disorder. So all of these have the biomarker aspect we can measure in our translational studies as well as our clinical studies. And then um, with the, the addition of these, we're going after some larger indications. So both Wilson and PKU um, have about 50,000 patients uh, worldwide. So that rounds out our IMD portfolio, and I just have a couple minutes left, so I'll touch quickly on our heme affiliate program. So I mentioned heme, our heme B program is unpartnered, uh, and that's currently in, the fa in a phase one, two study. Um, we've dosed our first cohort, so cohort one is three patients. All of the cohorts are going to three, be three patients. We anticipate uh, between nine to 12 patients will be uh, the trial size for each of our phase one, twos, uh, both for hemophilia, for hemophilia B as well as for our trials going forward. Uh, and then just quickly on our collaboration with Bayer, that's our HEMA program. We essentially take that program all the way to phase one, two, human appropriate concept, as well as do the process development and manufacturing work to get them ready to take the ball over at, uh, at that point. Um, but again, a great partner for this program given their hemophilia expertise. And so as we think about the balance of our IMD portfolio, that's the kind of partner that we're interested in having um, if, as we think about partnering the remaining unpartnered programs. Uh, so I'll just close with uh, just the summary uh, of dimension. So uh, currently advancing a seven-program uh, pipeline uh, with a focus on inherited metabolic disorders uh, in, in very severe conditions. And, uh, and then the platform really focused on uh, a robust, scalable uh, manufacturing platform. You know, our manufacturing guys always say, and I think we, we believe this, that, that the process is the product and the process is the product. So we, we really... Um, we really ascribe to that. And then uh, we've built a team that we feel like can advance multiple R&D programs uh, from bench to bedside. And, uh, and we are capitalized to advance these programs. Uh, our current cash runway takes us through, the, um, the, through 2018. And uh, again, thank you for your time. Feel free to pull me aside with questions. And I um, hope you guys have a great rest of the meeting. Thanks.